Good day, Grade Tens. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics, and I hope you had a good weekend and that you are ready to learn some maths. Now, if you recall, we were doing factorization on the last lesson with you guys. Um, and what we were doing was we were talking about, well, we first did some common factors and then we did some, we did some common factors and we did some difference of two squares, difference of two squares when there was a minus int. Okay, today we're going to carry on doing factorization, but we're going to move on to grouping. Now, grouping is actually very important because it helps you to get to a point where you can really use the other factorization techniques. So it is actually a very important way to factorize. Um, it's actually underestimated a lot. Okay, so first way to help you get an idea of what grouping is and how it works, we can look at multiplying out two binomials, two brackets with two terms, and then seeing what you get and then working out how we would reverse the process, okay? So when you're multiplying out, the, multiplying out these brackets, remember we are using the distributive law which means that we're multiplying everything within the bracket with everything else. So we're going, and remember we're using FOIL. FOIL, right? So we're going to multiply the whole bracket with the X, and then we're going to multiply the whole of that bracket with the Y. So it becomes A times X is AX, plus B times X is BX, plus A times Y is AY, plus B times Y is BY. So that would be multiplying it out. If I wanted to reverse the process, in fact, I wanted to group it, right? Do you see that I'd actually be looking for common factors? So again, as with all factorizing, what you really want to do is look to find your common factors first. See if there's any type of common factors. So we're going to look here and you'll see, okay, well, there's A and A and there's B and B. So we could group the first two because they both have a common factor of X and we could group the these last two here. And then we could see that, oh, look, if we did that, then we would end up taking out a common factor of X and left with A plus B. And then, oh, look, A plus B is a common factor and you take it out and you're left with X plus Y. Okay, so let's practice that. So the first thing that you need to do, as always, when we're looking at this, we need to look for common factors. Now, here is something that is very important. I want you to think of brackets and everything inside the brackets as a whole number. In other words, you could replace any of everything in this bracket with a triangle, for example, and everything inside this bracket with a triangle as well, okay, because in this case, because they're the same, okay? So everything in the bracket is one whole number. 3x minus 2y represents a whole number, and 3x minus 2y represents a whole number. But do you see that 3x minus 2y is the same here and here? So actually, we could take out a common factor of the bracket, right? I could say, well, because the things in the brackets are the same, I can go bracket, bracket, and then what's left over? It happens to be 2a, minus 5b. So do you agree that if the stuff in the brackets is the same, it doesn't matter what's in the bracket. I can now go, well, that was 3x minus 2y. It's the same stuff, okay? But if we look at this one, the brackets are slightly different. We're going to talk about that after we look at the other things that we could do with this. So remember, the very first thing you always look for are common factors common factors, right? So if you're looking for common factors, do you agree he has a 2 and he has a 12? So what could I take out? Do you agree I could take out a 2? I could take out a 2. That would be a common factor. So let's take out 2. And then what are we left with? I'm going to put a big bracket here. I'm left with a squared, a minus b, minus 2 goes into 12, 6 times, so it's 6b squared, b minus a. Okay, cool. 
Now, let's have a look at these brackets here. This is A minus B and B minus A. Do you agree that they're exactly the same, except that they're the wrong way around? This one's A minus B, and this is B minus A. And that is called a switch round. A switch round. If you have got, in this case, A minus B, and you've got B minus A, then do you agree that they've just been switched around? But you can make them be equal to each other by dividing the one by a minus sign. So in other words, let's take this dude here. I could rewrite that as minus A minus B. Now, that bracket is the same as that. But this is equal to B minus A. How can I say that? Well, if I take this minus and I multiply it out through the bracket again, a minus times a plus is a minus. So I can end up with minus A. Minus times a minus is a plus, and that's just B, which can be rewritten as B minus A. So do you agree that B minus A can be written as minus A minus B? Okay, so that's what we're going to do over here. We're going to do that. So we're going to go 2 a squared a minus b minus 6b squared. And then I'm going to take change the color so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go bracket minus bracket a minus b. I know it's a lot of brackets, but there's a reason that I'm putting this bracket in because I don't want to, if I don't put this bracket in, you're going to maybe make a mistake and think you wrote minus 6b squared minus a minus b, when in fact this is the same as saying minus 1 times this bracket. So in fact we're multiplying this with the minus 1 with the a minus b, okay? So what we need to do is we need to neaten this up, okay? So we got two big square. A squared, A minus B, right? Now, these are all three multiplied together. So minus times a minus is a plus, okay? Times a plus is a plus. So it's plus 6B squared, A minus B. Okay, that's looking much nicer now, because do you agree that that there and that there, are these are two common factors now. So we're back to taking our common factors. So I can take out a common factor of A minus B, and you're left with 2 A minus B, and then we're left with A squared plus 6B squared. And can we do anything else now? And no, we can't. If this had been a minus, we would have had the difference of two squares. But because this has been changed to a plus because of that minus, that switch around, there's nothing we can do with it. And that is the end of the story. Okay, so that's quite a nice question because it had a switch around. Let's have a look at another example or two. Okay. So the thing with grouping is you need to practice. And the more you practice, as I said before with factorizing, the more you practice, the easier it gets and the better you get at it, okay? So there are always options and we need to look at the different options. So I tend to always just try and group the first two and the last two and see what happens. Unless there's something very obvious that tells me not to, okay? So I am going to group the first two and the last two and see what happens. So that becomes a cubed minus 3a squared. Now when I group the second lot here to be very careful because we're taking out the minus and when we do that we are effectively dividing this by minus and this by minus. So it becomes minus 4a divided by minus becomes plus 4a and plus 12 divided by minus becomes minus 12. Right, now, let's see if I can take out any common factors in this first bracket. Do you agree I could take out an a squared here? Yes, a cubed and a squared. So if I take out a squared, what am I left with? I'm left with a minus 3 minus, and yeah, the common factor would be 4. So 4a divided by 4 is just a minus 12 divided by 4 is 3. 
okay and then life looks good because now effectively it worked our grouping worked okay we've got a minus three a minus three so i can take out a minus three and what is left there's a squared minus four that's what's left a squared minus four have we finished the sum no we have not because whenever they're asking you these questions, they're just asking you to factorize it. That's it. They're not going to say, oh, just factorize using grouping. They're just going to say factorize or simplify by using factorization. So we have to carry on until we are convinced that we're finished. Now, if we think about it, then what have we learned so far? We've learned about common factors. We have learned about the difference between between two squares and we've learned about grouping now we have applied grouping and we've applied common factors to this and we left with left with this and if we look at this we can see well there are no common factors in that bracket there are no common factors in this bracket but there is a difference of two squares in this bracket this is an a squared and this is 4, and 4 is a perfect square because 2 times 2 is 4. So in fact, this is a difference of 2 squares. So I can continue to factorize this by writing a minus 3, and then it would be the square of the first term, which is a, the square of the last term, which is 2, and then you do two of them, and the one's a minus, and the other one's a plus, and now I'm finished. Right. Okay, not too bad. So always, always, always make sure that your final answer, what you think is your final answer, is completely factorized. Otherwise, you'll lose marks. Right, let's look at this. Yeah, we've got 2AC plus 6BD minus 3AD minus 4BC. Hmm. Okay, so if we group with this and this, then we end up with a 3 and a 4, which don't actually divide into each other. But if I group this and this, I'm going to end up with an A and a B. And if I group, okay, so let's try that. Okay, so you guys need to understand that with all of these things, we need to try things. So I'm going to try this. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work and then we'll try the other way okay so i'm going to group the first and the last and the middle two and see what happens so i'm going to go 2ac minus 4bc plus 6bd minus 3ad hmm, okay so i'm grouping the first and the last and the second and the third terms Let's see if that works, okay? So if I look at my first term, the first term now, which is in the brackets, do you agree I can take out a common factor of a two? And then also if I look at my letters, I can see I can take out a common factor of a C. So if I do that, I take out a two and a C. I'm left with A minus two B, okay? A minus 2B because 2C would cancel with these and you're left with A and 2 goes into 4 twice. The C's cancel and you're left with B. Now let's do plus. What could I take out here? Do you agree I've got a common factor of 3 and I have a common factor of D? So if I take out a 3D here, 3 goes into 6 twice. The D's cancel and I end up with a B minus 3 cancels with 3, and D cancels with D, and I'm left with an A. Hmm, so that actually looks quite good, because, yeah, you've got an A and an A, and this is 2B, and that's 2B. The only problem is that this is 2B minus A, and this is A minus 2B. So what do we know this is? We know that this is a switch round switch round we actually have to switch it around to make it work so how do we do that we go equals 2c a minus 2b plus 3d times by remember it's a times and again i'm going to change color so you can see what i'm doing it becomes minus a minus 2b 
Okay, remember this is multiplied. So then what happens? We end up with 2C A minus 2B plus, is it plus? Let's have a look at it. Okay, a plus times a minus is a minus 3D times by A minus 2B. So do you agree that these two now are the same and we've got to take out common factors of A minus 2B? Okay, we can take out a common factor of A minus 2B. And what are we left with? We're left with 2C, sorry, minus 3D. 2C minus 3D. There we go. And that's it. There's nothing more in this bracket that we can factorize and there's nothing more in that bracket that we can factorize. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so now we've got 4z squared plus 3b minus 8z squared plus bz. Hmm, that doesn't look very nice at all. I wonder if there's anything we can do with that. Okay, 4z squared plus 3b minus 8z plus bz. Let's see if there's anything we can do with that to make it look simpler. Remember our plan is just to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, if we group those two together, we end up with a b and a number. If we end group these two together, we just end up with z squared and b. That's not going to work. What happens if we grouped this with this and this with this? Let's do that. Do you agree? I could take group that would be 4z squared minus 8z plus 3b plus bz. Okay. Do you agree? I could take out a common factor of 4 and I could take out a z. So I'd left with 4z and what am I left with? I'm left with z minus 2 plus over here I could take out a B and I'm left with 3 plus Z. Okay, so that definitely doesn't work. Definitely does not work. In fact, I think that there's nothing much we can do here because if I group that with that and that with that, nope, there is nothing we can do here. So that doesn't factorize more than this. Okay, that's it. That's as far as we can go. And unfortunately, you do get questions like that. And they do them especially to make, well, just to test whether or not you actually know what you're doing. It's a bit mean. Let's look at this one. We've got 4a squared plus 2a cubed plus a minus 2. Okay, so what happens if, and like I said, I just like to try it. I'm going to group the first two and the last two and see what we get. If that doesn't work, then we'll try and group something else. Okay, if we group the first two, we'll end up with 4a squared plus 2a cubed plus a minus 2. Okay, if we then took out a 2 and an a squared, what do we left with? If we take out a 2 and an a squared, what are we left with? We left with 2 plus a plus a minus 2. And do you see that's as far as we can go with this question as well? Because this is an a2 plus a and this would be an a minus 2. So because those are different, this, if this was a minus, then we'd have a switch around, okay? But because this is a plus and this is a minus, they, there is nothing more we can do here, and that is your final answer. Okay. In fact, let me just show you what would happen if that was actually a minus. Let's just show you that. So let's say you had 4a squared minus 2a cubed plus a minus 2. Let's just show you, okay? Then do you agree if we use exactly what we did before? We group the first two and the last two. We left with 4a squared minus 2a cubed, right? 
plus a minus two. So what could we do with these first two? We could take out a common factor of 2a squared. I take out 2a squared. And what am I left with? Well, 2 goes into 4 twice and they cancel. Minus 2 divided by 2 is 1 and you're left with a plus a minus 2. And at this point, because they are both minus, and they have the same values in their brackets, but they're in the opposite order. This is two minus a, and this is a minus two. Do you see that I could do a switch around? So I'm going to do a switch around, and whenever I do a switch around, I always choose the one that doesn't have a number in front of it. It doesn't have coefficient, okay? Or anything, anything in front of it except for like a plus or a minus. So this was the trick. Yeah, they were expecting you to do a switch round even though this was a plus. Okay, so that was kind of what they were, this, they were being a bit sneaky about. You have to have the one have a 2 minus a and the other one being a minus 2. In other words, they have to have exactly the same values, but then they have to be swapped with them in the wrong order for it to be a proper switch round. So we're going to go 2a squared, 2 minus a plus minus 2 minus a. So all I'm doing is taking the minus out of this. I'm dividing by minus 1. So then it becomes, I'm doing this a bit slowly, so you can make sure you get this right. It becomes 2a squared, 2 minus a, plus times a minus is a minus 2 minus a. So do you agree that I now can take out a common factor of what? I can take out a common factor of 2 minus a. So it becomes 2 minus a, and you're left with 2a squared minus 1. Okay, and now some of you might be very tempted to go, ooh, 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 well, this is the difference of two squares because this is an a squared and that's a 1. Almost, but not quite, because why? Because of this number here. 2 is not a perfect square, so this is not the difference of two squares, so we are finished with that sum. Finished, finished, finished. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so now we've got a squared minus 4b squared minus 2a plus 4b. Sure, okay. So I know that there are a lot of examples here, but the reason there are a lot of examples is because you, for the grouping specifically, you need to practice, practice, practice. So I want you guys, when you do watch this video again, to stop at the beginning of the page Try the questions for yourself, see if you can get them right, and then continue and see if you did get them right, okay? Um, just sitting watching me and nodding your head as you follow me is great, but it doesn't really test to see if you actually would know what to do if it was in an exam situation. Okay, so we've got a squared minus 4b squared minus 2a plus 4b. So again, what we need to do is check four common factors throughout and there aren't any. Okay, and it's obviously not just a pure difference of two squares because there's more than two. So the next thing we're going to do is look for grouping. So I'm going to just group the first two and the last two and see what happens. If it doesn't work out, I'll try another method. So that becomes a squared minus 4b squared minus, now yeah, you have to be careful because I'm grouping these two and there's a minus outside the bracket, these swap signs. It becomes minus 2a becomes 2a minus 4b, okay? We're basically dividing this minus into each of these numbers. So minus 2a divided by minus is a positive 2a and plus 4b divided by minus is a minus 4b. Right, now we need to look at this. Do you agree that this is a squared minus 4b and that is a perfect square? 4 is a perfect square. b squared is a perfect square and they're separated by minus. So this is the difference of two squares, which become a minus 2b, a plus 2b. Right, now let's have a look at this. It's obviously not the difference of two squares because a is not squared and b is not squared, okay? So there are no squares in this bracket. But could we take out any common factors? And yes, we can. We can take out a 2. So we take out minus 2 
and we're left with a minus 2b. Okay, now whenever you're stuck when it comes to simplifying these things, always go back to basics. And the most basic thing you can look for is a common factor. So, changing color and let's highlight. Do you agree that this is a minus 2b and that's a minus 2b. So we can take out a minus 2b as a common factor. And what are we left with? Well, this is a plus 2b minus 2 times what? Well, we've taken out the a minus 2b, so it's going to be 2 times 1. So that's the end of that. But the last thing we need to do is make it look pretty. Okay, because nobody likes brackets within brackets for their final answer. So that becomes a minus 2b and then a plus 2b, whoopsie, sorry, 2b minus 2. There we go. Okay, m5 minus m to the 4 minus m plus 1. Right, so normally if this was a normal lesson, I would give you a couple of minutes to try this question by yourself and then see how you do. But because a lot of you can actually, because you can press exactly on the same button or on the same link as you did before to get to a recording of this lesson, I'm just going to carry on and then I'm going to let you watch and see how you did it and if you missed it you can actually go back to the recording and watch it again and grade tens at this point i just want to really urge you to join the to enable website and then also to join the to the grade 10 mathematics group um, and the reason i would suggest you do that is because then you can message me and you can tell me if you're struggling with a certain section and then I can make lesson plans for those sections um, or if you didn't quite understand a certain section or if you had a problem with something I did in the class and you can message me. Okay, I might not, might not read the messages while I'm teaching you because it's a bit difficult to sometimes read all the messages but I will definitely read them after the lesson and then address them in the next lesson. Okay, so we've got m to the 5 minus m to the 4 minus m plus 1. And again, first things first, I'm going to try and group first two and the last two. And you will notice that taking out a common factor is not optional in this, at this point in time. Why? Because you've got m, m, m and 1. So obviously there's no common factor that covers all four letters. Okay. So if we group this, we've got m to the 5 minus m to the 4. And if we take out a minus, and what happens? Minus into a minus gives you a plus m. A minus into a plus gives you a minus 1. Okay. Now let's see if we can take out any common factors. Yeah, well, it's pretty obvious that the common factor is m. In fact, it's m to the 4. And then what are we left with? We're left with m minus 1. How do I get that? Because m to the 5 divided by m to the 4 leaves you with an m to the 1, but we don't write the 1. Okay. Minus 1. Minus m minus 1. Right. So do you see, remember what I said to you at the beginning, that we use the brackets as real numbers. So this bracket is identical to that bracket. So we can take these out as common factors. So we're left with m minus 1. And what are we left with? We're left with m to the 4 minus, and then there's an implied 1 here. There's implied minus 1 times m minus 1. So it's minus 1. Okay, now, are we finished this sum? We've got m minus 1, and then we've got m to the 4 minus 1. So, let's go in our heads through the routine that we would do. Do we have any common factors in either of those brackets? No, we don't. Can we look for the sum and difference of two squares? m is not a perfect square, but m to the 4 is, and so is 1. So, this year is actually the difference between two squares. So we can write this as m minus 1. The square root of m to the 4 is 
2 m squared. So you're left with m squared minus 1, m squared plus 1. Okay, are we finished now? We've got m minus 1, which we can't factorize any further. We've got m squared plus 1, which we can't factorize any further. But what about m squared minus 1? Well, that is again the difference between two squares. a is a perfect square. I mean, m squared is a perfect square and 1 is a perfect square. So you're left with m minus 1 m minus 1, m plus 1. This we can't do anything to because there's a plus there, so it becomes m squared plus 1. There we go. And if you want to really impress the teachers, you can write, well, these two brackets are the same, so it becomes m minus 1 squared, m plus 1, m squared plus 1. But it's not necessary. Writing this out is beautiful and the way it should be done. Sure, that was quite a long sum. Right, now let's talk about factorizing trinomials. Now, trinomials are also called quadratics. So it really doesn't matter whether you're talking about quadratics or trinomials, it's exactly the same thing. And the first type of trinomial you get is a perfect square trinomial. And just like we did with grouping, I think that the best way to learn how to factorize a perfect square trinomial is actually to find the product of them for a couple of examples and see if we can see a pattern. And once we've identified that pattern, then we can reverse engineer it. We can go backwards to find how to find the a square, I mean, how to factorize the perfect square trinomials. Okay, so x minus square is six squared is the same as x minus 6 times by x minus 6, right? So we're going to use FOIL. And what does FOIL stand for? It stands for first, you guys should know this, outers, inners, and last. Okay, first, outers, inners, and last. So first is going to be x times x, which is x squared, right? Then it's outers, so it's x times minus 6 is minus 6x. Then inners, minus 6 times x is minus 6x. And then last, it's minus 6 times minus 6, which is minus 36. So now, actually it's not, it's plus 36, because it's minus times minus is a plus. So now if we look at this, what do we have with x squared minus 12x plus 36. Hmm, okay. Let's do another example and see if we can see a pattern again. Okay, so we've got, again we're using FOIL and I'm going to write it out nice and slowly. We've got x plus 4y times by x plus 4y. So x times x is x squared. x times 4y is plus 4xy. 4y times x is plus 4xy, and then finally, 4 times 4 is 16, and y times y is y squared. So now let's add the like terms, and we've got x squared, 4 and 4 is 8, so it becomes plus 8xy plus 16y squared. Hmm, okay. So we're starting to see a pattern. Now let's try a shortcut, but did you see what the shortcut was? Let's have a look at this. Do you agree that what have we got? We've got x becomes x squared. This 4y becomes 16y squared. And the 8xy seems to be these two multiplied together and then doubled. And that's exactly what it is. So what is the shortcut? If I have a plus x, all squared, it becomes the first term squared, then it becomes the last term squared, okay, and then it becomes, we multiply these two together and then multiply them by 2, so it becomes 2ax. Now all you have to do is worry about the pluses and minuses between these terms. Okay, so the last term is always a plus. 
Okay, because we're multiplying either plus times a plus or minus times a minus. It's always a plus. And this term is, if you look at it, oops, sorry, is always whatever this term sign is. So if this is a plus, then this is going to be a plus. And if this was a minus, then that was going to be a minus. And that's the shortcut. So we're going to square the first term, we square the last term, we multiply the two together and double. That's it. Okay, so let's practice. Square the first term, P squared. Square the last term, Q squared. Then we are multiplying these two and doubling them. So P times Q is PQ and then we double it so it becomes 2PQ. This sign is always the sign of the bracket, the actual term. And that's your answer. Let's now multiply this out just to make sure it works. So if you've got P plus Q all times by P plus Q, okay, P times P is P squared. P times Q is plus PQ. P times Q is plus PQ. And Q times Q is plus Q squared. And there you go, P squared plus 2PQ plus Q, Q squared. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared. Ta-da! Okay, now let's try the shortcut again on this. Okay, so what have we got? Square of the first term is A squared. Square of the last term, minus times minus a plus, so it's like it B squared, and there's always a plus. And then we multiply these two together and double it. In fact, I have enough space, enough space, so let's write it again properly. We've got a squared, we've got plus b squared, and then we've got minus times a plus is a minus, two times a b is two a b. Ta-da! Okay, so do you see that the shortcut actually works very well for us, but you've got to remember it. And I find a lot of students forget to double the middle term. So for that reason, I would say that if you're prone to forgetting things like that in the exams, just multiply it like normal. It's not a big deal. You can use FOIL and make sure that you remember, get it right. It's more important that you get it right than you, you use a shortcut. Okay, so now let's do this one using the shortcut. So you've got 2z squared. Okay, I'll write it out slowly. 2z or squared plus 2 times 2z times 3p plus 3p or squared. So that becomes 2 squared is 4z squared plus 2 times 2 is 4 times by 3 is 12zp plus 3 squared is 9p squared. There we go. So that is how you get to use the shortcut. Now we need to start looking at factorizing other trinomials. So again, what I'd like to do is I would like to practice the product first. We need to multiply it out and check that we know how to get the answers before we can go back and factorize. And then what I want you to do now is while we're doing just this page, I want you to look for a pattern because there is a pattern. And just as much as there was a shortcut for the perfect square trinomials, there is a pattern here that we can use when we're factorizing other trinomials. Okay, so let's get started. And in order to make sure we're getting this right, I'm going to use FOIL on every single one of them. Okay, so x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Plus 3 times plus x is plus 3x. And plus 3 times plus 5 is plus 15, which becomes x squared plus 8x plus 15. So you can see that what has happened here is we've got the first term squared, okay, then we've got the last two terms which makes up the 15 and then something happens to get the 8. Okay, we'll talk about that in a bit. Let's try the next example. Let's try this one. Okay, yeah, we've got x plus 3 but then we've got also got x minus 5. So again, we're going to apply the foil. We're going to go x times x is x squared. 
Then we've got x times minus 5 is minus 5x, plus 3 times x is plus 3x, and plus 3 times minus 5 is minus 15. Okay, so there's an interesting development here with the plus 3x minus 15 and the fact that we haven't seen one of the teachers at all today. So if we add up these like terms, we get x squared minus 5x plus 3x is minus 2x minus 15. Okay, let's try this one. x times x is x squared. Then we've got minus 5x. Then we've got minus 3x. And a minus times minus is a plus. 15. Okay. This becomes x squared minus 5x minus 3x is minus 8x plus 15. I hope you're starting to see a pattern here. I'll point it out to you in a minute. x times x is x squared. That's that. Then let's go. x times 5 is plus 5x minus 3 times by x is minus 3x and then we've got minus 3 times minus 5 is minus 15 which becomes x squared plus 2x minus 15. Okay, so let's see what we can talk about with patterns. Do you agree that the first term is just the product of the first two terms? Okay, so this is just the first terms times the first term. Right, that's what's happening here. Then the last term is being multiplied with the last term. Last by last. Okay, do you agree with that? 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times minus 5 is minus 15. Minus 3 times minus 15 is plus 15. And minus 3 times plus is a minus, right? Then, do you see that here, what are we doing? We are adding these two. And here we are adding them again. Admittedly, the ones are minus, but we're adding it. Yeah, we're adding it again. And finally, we are adding it. So it becomes the sum of, what can I say? The sum of the two products. Okay. Now let's talk about the signs. And here's the trick when it comes to trinomials. If the signs are the same, okay, if you've got, mm, where can I write this? Okay, if you've got plus and a plus, okay, then all the signs in the trinomial are going to be plus plus as well. Awesome, no problem, okay? If we've got minus and minus, then one, then what happens is, do you see that it becomes in two brackets, it's minus and minus in one bracket. Then the first term is a minus and the last term is a plus. And let's think about that, why would that be? This is a minus times a minus is a plus, but yeah, we are adding them. So minus five minus three gives you minus eight X, right? Yeah, we've got a minus times a plus makes a minus, okay? But do you see again, we're adding, we're going plus 3x minus 5 and end up with a minus 2. Okay, so do you see that if the signs are the same, then we always end up with a plus at the end. If it's plus and plus, it ends up with a plus. If it's minus and minus, it ends up with a plus. Okay, but if the signs are different, he has plus and minus, and this is minus and plus, do you see that the last sign of this is a minus? Hmm. And then do you see as well that if the signs are the same, I mean, whatever the, if the signs are the same, whatever the sign is, that's what the middle term is. So because these signs are the same, they're both plus, the middle term is going to be a plus. Since these signs are the same, the middle term is going to be the same as that sign, which is a minus. Whereas, yeah, 
it totally depends on which of these has got the bigger, which of these is the bigger number. This is a minus five, so therefore this is going to be a minus because five is bigger than three. Yeah, the three is smaller than five and the three has got the minus in front of it. So therefore this is plus two. Sure, okay, so we've done quite a bit today because we've done quite a complicated bunch of factorization and now we've moved on to factorizing of normal trinomials, but all with a coefficient of one in front of the x squared. So what I'd like you to do, if you can, is re-watch this video, make sure you know these rules that we've just been talking about now, and then in the next lesson, which is on Wednesday at three o'clock, we will start, we'll, I'll go through these rules again, and then we're going to start factorizing trinomials. Please, please make sure that you know how to factorize these trinomials, just the rules first before we do anything else. Have a great day.